We've talked previously about the operands that machine instructions can perform operations on, but now we will talk about how machine instructions retrieve those operands from various locations. This video is about addressing modes. And so the addressing modes we'll be discussing are listed here. Each one describes a way that a machine instruction can specify how to retrieve a value which then has some operation performed on it. Note that any individual instruction can actually use multiple distinct addressing modes for separate operands. We'll see several examples of this. Now the simplest addressing mode is immediate addressing in which an operand is included directly in the machine code instruction. This looks like the following. With immediate addressing, an instruction consists of some number of bits that define the opcode and then other bits that define the actual operand. When you look at specific machine instruction architectures, there may be some other bits that define other parts of the instruction, but these are the main bits to be aware of, the opcode and in the case of immediate addressing, the operand. Now, an example of this in x86 is the move command. This move command will put the decimal value 25 into the register AX. Now note that this instruction actually has two operands and only one of them is using immediate addressing, specifically 25. So if we look at how this instruction is formatted, we would see that some portion is dedicated to the opcode some portion is dedicated to defining AX, that's a register, and then we have some bits here that are the actual number 25 encoded in binary. Because instructions have limited length, using immediate addressing means there's actually a limit on the size of the operand that can be specified in this space. However many bits are reserved for this operand indicate what the maximum operand value can possibly be. So that is one limitation of immediate addressing. Let me emphasize now again that the register portion, the AX, is not using immediate addressing. It is using register addressing, which we'll discuss more momentarily. The next addressing mode we'll discuss is direct addressing, which is where the bits in the machine instruction contain a memory address. Here is an example of an instruction that uses direct addressing. We have an opcode followed by a memory address. So this looks similar to immediate addressing, but in this case, this address refers to a particular location somewhere in memory. So the operand we want is in memory at an address specified within the instruction itself. Strictly speaking, x86 assembly language does not allow direct addressing, but we can imagine simple assembly language instructions that have the form instruction followed by a memory address. So this made up instruction load would load whatever contents are in the memory address 5000 hex into some implicitly designated register. So that register could be an accumulator, for an example. And we've certainly seen examples of instructions like this in many of the pseudo-assembly languages we've looked at in previous videos. The next addressing mode on our list is indirect. This is where one memory address is contained in the machine instruction, which refers to a location in memory containing yet another memory address whose contents are the actual operand we want to access. Here is a diagram of what indirect addressing looks like. It is similar to the direct addressing diagram except the address in the instruction leads to a location in memory which contains another address which points to another memory location where the actual operand is located. Note that an instruction with indirect addressing would require the CPU to do two memory lookups. So this type of operation is inherently inefficient, but still necessary in some cases. 
the x86 assembly language does not support indirect addressing specifically, but once again we can imagine instructions that would use this type of addressing. For example, we could have a load instruction as we did with direct addressing, but in this case, instead of loading the contents of address 9000 hex, we would go to that address and then follow whatever its contents are to the other location. The next addressing mode is register addressing, which we've actually already seen in this video. It simply means that a portion of the machine instruction designates a particular register. With register addressing, we have a portion of the machine instruction that designates a register. The registers exist on the CPU, and there is a very small collection of them. The actual operand we're looking for will be contained inside of the particular register. Note that this video does not draw the instructions with any sort of scale, but it should be kept in mind that when you use register addressing, you typically do not need many bits to designate the register you are talking about. This is because the number of available registers is typically fairly small. So we have more space in the instruction for other things, such as additional operands or other parts of the instruction. The example that we've already seen is the move command. In this instruction, the AX portion designates a register where this value will be stored. This next approach combines registers and memory. It's called register indirect. In this case, a register contains a memory address which is accessed to retrieve its contents. With register indirect addressing, we have an opcode and a register in the actual instruction. The register refers to a register that contains a memory address which actually contains the operand that the instruction will operate on. The next addressing mode we'll discuss is displacement. Displacement is when you have both a memory address and some other number which you add to that memory address to find the actual operand you care about. We'll be discussing this at a very high level. In specific assembly languages, displacement is handled in a variety of different ways and usually is actually a number of different types of related addressing modes. One version of displacement addressing that you could define would use a register and an address. And in this case, the address would be a base address in memory indicated here and then the register would store an offset from that address. So to find out what the actual operand you want to use is, you would take the memory address, add the offset found in the register to it, and that would give you another memory address and within that memory address would be the operand that your operation would apply to. You can see in this diagram that the distance from the base address that's defined and the memory address that contains the operand you want is equal to the offset which in this example is in an actual register. The final addressing mode is stack addressing which we saw in our discussion of machine instructions with zero operands. With stack-based addressing, the instruction only has to contain an opcode. There will be some particular register that is reserved for storing the address of the top of the stack. The use of that register would be implicit with this type of addressing. So examples of this that we've seen previously are an add instruction, that would remove first the top of the stack and then also the element beneath that and then add them together and put the result back on the stack. There can also be stack-based operations that are combined, for example, with register addressing like a pop instruction that would pop an element off of the implicitly located top of the stack and store the result in a 
register, in this example, B. And those are the basic addressing modes typically supported in various machine languages. We will look at some specific addressing modes for specific machine languages in a later video.